Hello, welcome to another episode of Let's Make It. And this is going to be episode 30 of Let's Make It. And I'm here today with Bob. Say hi, Bob. Good evening. How's it going? It's going good. So well, you probably know I've been on vacation. Actually, I'm still technically on vacation. You see, I got the wristband still from Adventure Park today. That's so, right. Um, came back from vacation or my weekend vacation with two, uh, an eight and a nine or a seven and nine year old. Uh, soon to be eight and ten year old. Uh, so we're taking them around to different places this week while, we're, while they're here. So today was Adventure Park. Tomorrow's an Orioles game. So Sounds like fun. Yep. Yeah, I wasn't originally going to do uh, a show tonight, but... I decided I had some emails that I hadn't answered for a while, so I was going to go th- just going to walk through them tonight. And I want to talk a little bit about this thing I mentioned to Bob while I was driving down to North Carolina. This thing called a Galago, and you can kind of see it in my my hand here. And I don't have an overhead camera right now, but it's really small. It's a 28 pin um, dip, but it basically is an ARM chip, very similar to what an Arduino is. Um, in fact, it may be using the same chip. Do you know it's using the same chip, Bob? I didn't get that far. I don't. I don't know. I mean, Let's I'll go. I'll go find. Yeah. Okay. I mean, basically, it's this is the equivalent of an Arduino, um, and it has a, just some additional features that are kind of neat. One of them being the debugger built right onto it. Um, it has five analog and um, eight digital I/O. Is it ten, ten digital I/O? Let me find it here. Somewhere I still have it. Ah, ten digital I/Os. That are all pulse width modulation, so uh, you can see that's on it. It has um, the I two C in it as well as the um, the what you call it, the SDI. What do you call those ports? Were um, let's see, what is it? The serial SDI, in, S- serial yeah. out. This SPI port, SPI I two C. So the SPI port is up to 36 megabits per second. The I2C port is 1.5 megabits per second. has a separate UART on it, so you don't have to use up pin 0 and 1. Uh, 10 high-speed pulse width modulation pins, 6 analog uh, ADC pins, and up to 10-bit resolution. And 6 of the PWM pins are actually up to 32-bit resolution as far as the timers go. So very, very powerful, all in this tiny little chip. And... I'm kind of curious how they make something like this because they have surface mount on both sides. I would think if you had surface mount on both sides, the other one side would fall off on the other side and heat it up, but I don't know somehow they're doing it. Very, very interesting though. So I'm going to play that this week. Uh, it seems like it has some neat features in it. So what did you find? It was, it's, it's an ARM chip, isn't it? Actually, I haven't. I'm trying to find the specs, the spec sheet on it and can't. I haven't found it yet. So I'll... <laughs> I'll find it and I'll, I think I'll it's let you right, know. Right here. Yeah, it's a 72 megahertz, 32 bit ARM CPU. It doesn't give which ARM it is, though. So 32 kilobits of flash, more than an Arduino Uno, 8, kil- 8 kilobytes of RAM. So, yeah, pretty amazing little thing. And this is actually something I sponsored on Kickstarter, and I just finally got around to, to playing with it. Um, and I'm probably going to put some pin- solder pins onto it and put it on a breadboard and play with it a little bit more. But I just plugged it in to see if I could talk to it, and it worked right off. But I haven't debugged anything with it, so that's going to be the the cool thing about it, I think. So, um, like I said, this week I hadn't really planned on doing the show. So I kind of came back from Venture Park, and I'm like, well, I have some emails I haven't answered for a while, and they're probably waiting for me. Maybe you can get upset with me because I haven't answered these emails for a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through them. And... uh, I'm going to talk about them a little bit. And one, I'm actually going to show some code because one, I'm actually required some code. Um, the first couple here, though, um, apparently episode 15 didn't have any show notes in it. And I fixed that earlier. Uh, so Jason Hayes, uh, who emailed me on the 25th, and um, Jack Maggetti, sorry if I miss say your name there, it's M A K G A T I email me on the 19th. So I haven't gotten back to either one of them yet, but I did put the code up tonight and I did, res- I did respond to emails tonight with them as well. So episode 15 was the RFID project. And for some reason, the code never made in the show notes on the website. So I'm not quite sure why, but they're there now. I've went ahead and fixed all that stuff. So um, the other one I got, well, and one of the ones I got was from Imam. I'm going to say it's, it's uh, I-M-A-M. Um, he's from Indonesia, so I'm not quite sure. I don't know. I'm not saying his name properly. Sorry. But uh, he was just 
writing to say uh, thank you for the Arduino tutorials. Um, that it really helps out all of him and all of his friends study about microcontrollers, uh, especially Arduino. And he's um, a, he's in senior he's a he's a senior he's in senior high school. So he's just calling to say he just wrote to say thank you for the shows. So um, wrote him back and said you're welcome or you thank you I'm glad you're watching <laughs> more than anything. So um, the other one, which is going to take us a little more time here, is uh, I had a question from Daniel O'Connor, and it actually came into my blog, the MikeMyers.me blog, and he's been trying the code for episode 12 with the servo, and he wanted to know what it would take to get it to, and episode 12 was we you could send in a, a value via serial to say where you wanted the uh, servo to point to. So he wanted to know how to make it do four of those. So I can, I did some coding already, and I'm going to tweak it a little more probably before I send the final result to them. But I can walk through um, some of what would have to happen. So let me hop over to, to that. So um, this is just a modified version of our original one. And we're going to scroll down. And what we did originally was we had one servo, and it was called my servo. So here I've made four different servo var variables, my servo A, B, C, and D. We still have our, our value to read in. And then down here you say you see I'm creating a state table, which we talked about in, in other episodes, and I call that va variable mode. So there's two modes. There's numbers mode and servo mode. So let's and then we have servo ID, which I added, which is the servo you want to make change. So when we come down here. And you see we start our serial, and then I attach each of the servos, A, B, C, and D to different pins. In this case, 9, 10, 11, and 6. And here's where things change a little bit. So we still have the if serial av available, and I read a character in, and I can go back, I can go back out. But what I'm looking for is if it's A through D, the first character is greater than or equal to A, or less than or equal to D, then I am setting the, mo the next mode to numbers, and the servo ID equal to CH. So here's a problem that I found that I haven't fixed yet. Um, if I set this mode equal to numbers now, when I get down to here, this isn't going to function properly. So I need to change, move this down beneath the numbers. So I haven't done that yet. Uh, in the final version I send, I'll do that. I, I found this out just walking through it. So basically what is I set the mode equal to numbers and I store in servo ID which servo value you want to change. And then I go into this numbers mode and the next thing I read should be, should be a number, 0 through 9. And I'm going to store that value in this array like we did before. And when I get to the point where it's not a number, which means it's, it's a carriage return or something like that, I assume you're done. So I'm going to go ahead and take the value and compare it to the max value. And we're going to print out that we're going to set servo in the servo ID that we receive, which is A through D, and we're going to set that value to this value. And then here's where another problem, I, I for, remember writing this about this in the show, but I forgot about it, is down here I'm writing the servo value. However, I have to write servo values to all the servos, otherwise they don't work right. So I need to change this, and I'm going to change it before I write uh, this back to him, so that I'm writing all variables, all servos var values out. So that's something that um, I found just through experimentation. So there's very little code that needs to be changed, uh, but I did want to get uh, get back to him, and I will send this, and I will put this in the show notes for tonight too, just because it's something it's, that we talked about. So the other thing that I want to mention about this is, um, you got to be careful about your power draw because you're talking four servos, and I'm, my guess is going to be it's going to be too much power for the Arduino itself. It really depends on the servers that you're using. However, the servers that I used for that demonstration, there's no way I could run four of them off the Arduino because they're each drawing uh, 150 milliamps a piece. So that definitely, what's that's the maximum on the Arduino, right, Bob? 150, 180? Uh, the Arduino is specced at 450. That's 450? all you can draw. Uh, well, you, you could actually pull 500. It's specced at 500, but in reality, you're only going to get about 450. All right, so I could, I could run three so, servos so, safely. So you could run three, but you've maxed it out. Right, exactly. It's probably uh, not a good idea. Even at three, I think it'd probably be smart to run your power from a different source. Right, so that's something to remember. 
because um, I know running four four of my servers would definitely max it out way way over. So that's just something that's important to remember. So that's the emails that I've gotten. Um, I, again, this week we weren't really going to have a show, but uh, being on vacation and I'm back from my daytime activities at Adventure Park, I decided I was going to do a show. All right, let's see. Do I have another email here? I do not. So what do you say, Bob? you have anything? I really don't have anything. I've been uh, overloaded with other projects this week. The uh, customer schedules got pulled up, so I've had to work on that. And the the board that I was waiting on finally came in, and I've got all the parts to put it all together, but I haven't had time to, to solder yet. So That's me. I have all those boards that I showed you last week, and I haven't had a chance to get them any of any parts on any of them yet so yeah and i've got the board i was waiting on uh from last week's episode and i, I just haven't had time yet so well i do have like tomorrow during the day free and I, depending on the weather maybe thursday during the day so the other thing i mentioned to bob before the show is i have some surface mount stuff that i want to do and uh, i was going to do it in an oven so uh, talking to people who've done this they said the oven's hard because you can't tell when it's done they said, get a skillet. So I ordered a skillet, which I think came today. If it came today, tomorrow I may be cooking some surface mount parts. And they are very, very small. It's crazy how small they are. The resistors... I'm looking, and, for, I'm looking forward to seeing how this turns out. <laughs> the resistors and capacitors are so small. I mean, they're tiny. I got this I got this thing you wear in your head. It's a magnifying glass as well. And even using that, it's like, I can't believe how small this thing is. I mean, my finger is bigger than my eye, than I, my vision. Uh, when I'm wearing that thing. So, and I can still barely see this thing. So we'll see how tomorrow it goes or tomorrow, maybe when Thursday, whenever you know, I get a chance to do it. But I was hoping to do it tonight, but when I started looking around for stuff and I'm like, I don't have time to do this and, and do any kind of show. So I just I said, I'm not even going to try it tonight. So hopefully that works out good. Cause I don't, I don't want to ruin too many chips by doing, you know, practicing. Well, I'm looking forward to it because I, I haven't tried my hand at surface mount. So this I, is my first time. You, I'm going to I'm going to let you uh, uh, <laughs> stumble and then I'll give it a try. Yeah, it's my first time. They, they say using the skill, you can look at it. You can see when everything's actually flowed. So it's been hot off the flow where if it's in the oven. You can't tell you may pull it out and some things aren't done. So that's why I went. I just, I just bought an, a skillet off um, Amazon. So I think it came okay. today. I think it's up south, outside sitting. So hopefully. Because I asked my wife before the show if anything came. She goes, here's a big box outside. So hopefully that's my skillet. So I'll be cooking some parts. <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. I'll let everybody know next week. I'm, I'm going to tape it too. That way we can maybe show it on here of, you know, the what a, the process is to surface mount something like, a, you know, at home. So we'll have uh so hopefully we'll have good surface mount parts and not picture of the <laughs> yeah. fire department showing up. <laughs> right. Right. Well, that that could be too. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see. That definitely could be. So uh, I do want to say, if you have show ideas, we have, uh, Bob and I have a fun of show ideas. We got the boards for upcoming shows that we're going to start doing, but we'd love your input for things you'd like us to see. Um, we'd like to see your projects too. Make a video of your project that you've done uh, and send it in to us. We'd love to love to see it. Just uh, load it up to YouTube or somewhere like that, Vimeo, whatever, whatever you'd like to use, and then send us a link to it. And you may end up seeing it on the show here too. Make sure you uh, let us know it's okay to do that. Because uh, we'd love to show people's projects on the show as well. Yeah, I'm working on a project right now with, with a with a viewer right that uh, that I found I've found it very interesting what he's doing. Um, he's I don't think uh, he's ready for me to say anything, and I'm I'm not ready to say anything. But uh, I actually bought some parts the last time I was at Mauser just for his project, so I could hook things up on a breadboard so i'm sure we're going to be seeing that project on a future episode too that's so, awesome so yeah if people have ideas um we answer emails and uh help out with code sometimes and this one has really piqued my interest so it's it's turning it's going to turn into a real good project i think good yeah definitely let us know i mean we we love the feedback so we've been getting a lot of feedback um i'm a little slow getting back to you sometimes an email but uh, I do get back to you. It just takes me a little while sometimes. And I uh, love that feedback, most definitely. And in fact, uh, uh, the the more feedback we get, I think the better our show, show is going to be. Um, you can also yeah, go I, you can go get yeah. look at any of the previous show, show notes uh, at 
uh, techzen.tv. And if you find that there is something missing, please let me know, and I'll take, I'll take care of it and get a fix. We have all the show notes. Um, I think I'm not sure what happened with 15. I don't think there was a time where we actually had a database loss and I had to recreate a couple of things, but uh, it could have been related to that, but I'm not sure that it was. Um, the other thing is, you know, we do this show live every Monday night at 9, um, and we'd love to have you in, in with us. You come in and you can get in the chat room. You can chat with us live. You can watch us record it live, watch us make mistakes live, all that stuff. You know, it's part of the fun of it. And uh, you, you can always go to techzen.tv uh, slash live or just go to techzen.tv and click on the live link at the top and uh, join us in the, in the chat room. Um, you can also uh, tweet about us uh, and you can either watch our tweet or Twitter at techzen.tv or if you want to tweet about it, you can uh, use hashtag let's make it. And uh, we do, I do watch those hashtags as well. So I can see if, well, you know, if you're saying or if questions or whatever, I'll ask stuff out there. And uh, we've been saying for many weeks now about our new YouTube channel, but we're done past all that, you know, go move, go move thing. We're done with that. So when you just go to youtube.com slash TV and you can find all of our shows there. All right, Bob. It was a quick one. It was a quick one. Um, one thing I did want to say is that not only a lot of my code also uh, I have it on GitHub uh, for people to download, and I have seen where there's a few more downloads that have occurred lately. Email address is in there. If you got questions, comments, uh, I do try to comment the code as best I can um, and keep it simple so people can understand what we're doing. But uh, email address is in there, and the feedback is very much appreciated. Very good. Yeah, definitely feedback. Love the feedback. That's the best way to uh, to improve ourselves. So we love, love the feedback. All right. I think that's it for this week. And next week we're not. On, I'm not on vacation next week. Are you on vacation next week? Uh, no, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be around. Uh, uh, hopefully, all the project schedules are um, done with the changes, and I'll be back to doing a little soldering over the weekend. So I'll have my latest board ready to go. Very good. So next week should be back to normal. Should be. And we got a lot of things coming up in our in our schedule, so well, we can we can put things in there if you have other questions or want to do something special. So let us know. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Right. We'll see have everybody next week. All right. Night. For show notes for this show, contacts, and more, go to the TexN.TV website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the techzen.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show. You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks, like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.